It's a national emergency, so declared by President Donald Trump. This is Bill Whittle now. I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle. And Bill, this is a big dang deal. We talked about this in previous episodes of Bill Whittle now, as well as Right Angle. What might happen after President Trump appeared to make a deal with Democrats that didn't even get half a loaf for what he said he wanted for his wall. And uh, man, I have so many questions here, but we're going to try to keep this uh, to a manageable length. Um, let me just start with this idea. The president did spend a great deal of time in negotiation with Democrats and then turned around and just basically did what they didn't want him to do. Doesn't this make the president look like he negotiated in bad faith? Um, well, we don't. first of all, we don't know the details of what the negotiations after the fact were. But if I had to pick somebody who was negotiating in in bad faith, he wouldn't be my first choice. And who would be your first choice? Well, the, the entire look this you don't want you don't want to show to turn into the blame them all the time kind of thing. Sure. But when you but when you get right down to it, the fundamental difference between conservatives and liberals is that conservatives can say what they want, and liberals have to say what the American people want to hear because what they want is very different from what the American people want to hear. So it's in it's in the interest of, of, of Donald Trump and the people that support him to put a, a barrier, a wall, a border, whatever you want to call it, that makes this United States a sovereign nation and prevents unauthorized entry into our country. And it's in the interest of the Democrats for that to not happen. So when there is a when there is a deal or a, or a, um, uh, any kind of a uh, statement that we're going to allow talks to to see this happen, you've got to decide who's who wants the talks to happen and who wants them to fail. Well, you know, Bill, it strikes me as an interesting situation because as I listened to the president's remarks in the Rose Garden, he was talking about the reason for declaring this national emergency, and I don't want to miss one, but basically he said we're we're under invasion by criminals, mm -hmm. drugs, human trafficking networks, gangs, of course, illegal aliens. Uh, if I recall correctly, this was essentially his presidential announcement speech from June of 2015. Uh, Bill, how can you call it a national emergency declaration when this is what he was promising from the beginning and it's now three and a half years later? I think it's been a national emergency certainly throughout the entire Obama administration. And 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 you could probably make the case for the last 40 or 50 years under Republicans and Democrats. Um, now, the one thing in this whole equation that's a mystery to me and that I, I we've talked about many times before is that why we didn't start talking about the wall, building the wall on day two of his uh, first term. And one of the things that we've come up with is the idea that so many of these Republican uh, representatives, senators and represent representatives, who had sworn to do things like, yeah, we'll build the wall and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll eliminate Obamacare and all these other things, simply didn't do it when they had a chance to vote on it. Well, he kind of addressed that, by the way, and he, he said two things. Number one, he said he was kind of inexperienced during that first couple of years. And number two, without directly naming him, he indicated that it was uh, former House Speaker Paul Ryan's fault. Well, let's just, for the sake of the argument, say that it is. Um, we, look, Scotty, everything depends on, on the view you take of President Trump. And then all the things like bad faith negotiating and all the rest of it kind of kind of falls into place. Either you think that he's a kind of a, a bull in a china shop, a guy who who can't keep two thoughts together and who is determined to um, wing everything, or you you can take him as a guy who who is an iconoclast in the sense that he doesn't know how politics works, doesn't like how politics works, joins the vast majority of the American people on that score. And basically went in there and thought he could control this thing the way you would control a board meeting or, or something else that you actually were in charge of, as opposed to only being in charge of one third of. So, uh, look, I, I don't know the details of this, but I certainly wasn't I haven't been swept off my feet by by Paul Ryan's uh, uh, speaker uh, tenure at all. And I thought that the two years that Donald Trump was president, the Congress really let him and the Republican Party and the, and the, and the country down in a big way. So whether this is Trump basically backpedaling or whether this is Trump facing the realities of having tried two years of, of negotiating, presumably with your own side, 
I guess is kind of academic at this point. But as far as your issue about the national emergency goes, I don't think there's any question about that. And it's been one for a long time. So the question is, why suddenly declare it? Well, it's better to declare it now than it is tomorrow. And it's better to declare it tomorrow than it is five years from now. Well, the Democrats are arguing, of course, that uh, and and, and let me just stipulate up front that there was a time in recent memory when Democrats were all for a a more secure border and then President uh, Donald Trump got elected. But um, the Democrats are arguing basically border crossings are down. The vast majority of illegal aliens that do come into this country are merely overstaying their visas. Huge numbers of them are coming in uh, through our airports, flying in here totally legally. Um, And so essentially they're saying he drummed this up for political purposes uh should as nancy pelosi uh would say that he was just uh doing he's going outside of the bounds of the law in order uh to get something that he failed to get through the constitutional legislative process trump himself said i didn't need to do this i just wanted to get it done faster that's all doesn't that sound a little bit like not a national emergency well let's let's just uh, take apart the sentence that you that you issued first of all the first thing i noticed that caught my ear was that you, that the democrats used to be tougher on border uh, patrol uh, border control but clearly they weren't barack obama had basically told immigration and uh, and uh, border patrol agents to stand down the entire flood well what was certainly a, a pretty good running stream turned into a flash flood under under obama's administration and to say that the Democrats were tough on the border before Trump came along is just plain not true. I'm now, not saying they were tough on well, the border, they, but they were OK with some of the things that they now oppose. No, they were squawking those things, Scott. They were telling the American people what the American people needed to hear from Democrats in order to elect Democrats. But that's not what they wanted. And we know it's not what they wanted because it's not what they did. So uh, and to say that people are coming into the illegals are coming into the country through airports legally is a non sequitur. So obviously we're not talking about people who are coming into the country via airports with passports. We're talking about people sneaking across the border. So the question is, is this a national emergency? Yes or no. And as far as I'm concerned, you look up the definition of an invasion and to me, it seems like an invasion could be pretty fairly described as um, a group of people not of your nation crossing your border into your country without your permission bearing arms. And if that is a reasonable explanation for an invasion, then we've had an invasion going on here for 30, 40 years, which has gotten monumentally worse in the last uh, eight years, 10 years now, and which at some point is going to have to be dealt with. Now, if if Nancy Pelosi and 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 Schumer and all the rest of these guys want to play this game of, well, we'll give you a billion now, or maybe we won't, or whatever. We know they don't want the wall built. We know. We know they don't want the wall built because that doesn't play to either their limousine liberal um, uh, donors or to their or to their uh, far left base, which is saying everyone should be allowed to come into the country. There should be no borders. This is not a joke. This is not me making it up. This is what they say. This is what the protests are all about. So... We're back to where we started. We need some kind of control on the border. And after two and a half years of trying to get it done constitutionally, if he wants to declare a state of emergency, I think I and and look, you and I both have one thing in common, Scott, and that is that our principles supersede our politics. Right. We if 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 I thought that this was unconstitutional or, or in that nature, I would say so. But. I think that if if you exhaust all the other possibilities, and that seems to be the case, then you're left with your commander in chief authority to prevent armed invasion of the United States. And and the numbers on on the total numbers of of gang members that are illegal aliens, the total number of 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 murders of all of this stuff, these numbers are not insignificant. You know, they're 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 remarkably astonishingly high. And I don't think any civilization would put up with it. Well, uh, when you get to that legal issue, the constitutional issue, um, at least 13 states' attorneys general now have filed suit against the Trump administration, and their allegation is basically that the president has overstepped his his constitutional bounds when it comes to the separation of powers because he is now allocating funds, um, superseding the congressional role of allocating those funds. He's allocating funds contrary to the will of of the people's house and so he's violating that separation of powers well Um, hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on 
if you want to start talking about people being outside of their constitutional boundaries and you're talking about 13 states suing the president, the entire idea that a state like California can simply declare that as far as immigration is concerned, it's not part of the United States of America. For the, for the state of California and several others to declare themselves asylum states and to essentially say, well, we don't care about what the federal government needs in terms of passports. We don't care what you need in order to get into this country legally. We're declaring that this stretch of the U.S. border is wide open. That's you, that is the, certainly the states don't have the power to do that. They don't have the power to to lower the border of the United States of America at the areas of the states that they want to. So so I'm not impressed by this out of constitutional argument simply because well, well, Bill, the you states would never, are, the states are, would, are insane with this with this sanctuary state thing. You would never make the argument that because somebody else has done something unconstitutional, then we don't really need to address the legitimate uh, complaints that they're making about the unconstitutional actions of the president. How about dealing with what they're saying about the president's unconstitutional acts of him interfering with the congressional role to allocate funds? I don't know how Donald Trump has put this, and I don't know if this is an interim uh, step uh, between now and a, and a declaration of either war or some kind of a of a national emergency, but to the degree that he's he's interfering with the allocation of funds, I suppose he's telling people, "Here's the money I want, and, and I'm going to get it. And if not, I'm going to build it under my commander in chief authority." I, as far as I understand it, Scott, that is the only authority that he has to 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 actually go ahead and 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 essentially bypass the Congress is is through um, emergency measures taken as commander in chief in time of war. Now, if that requires a war declaration, OK, uh, I'm perfectly fine with that. It's I, it, certainly they've been at war with us for for 30 years or 40. Although years. as a conservative, you would want a congressional vote on that declaration of war. I would. We might have to wait a couple of years for that. Well, um, final okay. question about this. Um, there is a, a, a an organization advocacy group called Public Citizen that is suing now on behalf of uh, several um, landowners, but I've heard there could be as many as a thousand landowners affected by the construction of the wall in what they claim will be eminent domain takings of private land in order to build this wall. Uh, from your conservative principles and certainly your view of property rights uh, that are the foundation of this constitutional republic, don't you have a problem with the federal government stepping in and taking land in order to build this wall? Well, first of all, if you're telling me that the, that the majority or anything like the majority of people who live on the actual border upon whose land uh, uh, some of this wall would be built, if you're telling me that they're all opposed to the wall and they don't want a wall, I don't believe it. They're the ones who are in the most extreme conditions. They're the ones who are having their entire, uh, their forget their backyards, their entire houses are being rummaged through. And, and, and every single night they live in constant fear of these armed coyotes coming up from the border. So in terms of them being like a, some sort of interest group that's determined to, to sue the government because of the wall, I don't know. It seems a little it seems a little dicey to, and a little suspicious to me. But look, if we're talking about a case for eminent domain, Scott, how much how much room are we talking about here? I mean, is there a single person that lives close enough to the United States Mexico border where the wall construction would go through their living room or any part of their house? Is anybody close enough to that to that border? For this to be a real issue, because we're not talking about putting a five mile exclusion zone. Uh, we're, we're talking about a construction of a, of a vertical um, structure that is. Well, in a fairness, I'm not sure that they're not talking about a five mile exclusion zone. And I would presume that the government does want a healthy buffer around that thing. Well, the healthy buffer either exists or doesn't exist. And, and if there's no buffer now and you decide to put in a wall, then you're going to have better security than you would with no buffer and no wall. If you want just the buffer. Time to do that is past, I think. You know, I, I don't know how many people listen, eminent do, eminent domain to, to the degree that it is that it is happening internally in the United States and robbing people of their property, I think as a general rule, with maybe a couple of exceptions, but very few, is is a great evil. But if you're talking about property that is the actual border between the United States of America and some other country then I think you've got a reasonable case for, for, for having to buff up the defenses. And we don't have to buff up the defenses if we hadn't had the, the Democrats basically pull the teeth from the Border Patrol and, and, and immigration and exportations and all the rest so that this has become this kind of flood. 
if we'd had a border like we'd had all the way up until the 90s, I would say, this would be a trivial problem. But it's not a trivial problem anymore at all. Bill Whittle now comes to you five days a week thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com who contribute of their own means voluntarily in order to build this bulwark of conservative thought um, and to hear the reactions that come from a principled conservative to the daily news of the day. We know that this is the kind of thing that you face every day and it's nice to be able to be part of this team where you're able to think through with us how you would answer these challenges. That's the service we try to provide here and a lot of folks think, it, think it's very valuable and contribute anywhere from about 10 bucks a month up to about 50 bucks a month to make it happen. If you'd like to become one of that team, you can go to BillWhittle.com and click the Become a Member link. So for Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making this possible.